Hello, my name is Richard. I am an environmental engineer, and as an environmental engineer, I do a lot of soil and groundwater contamination assessments and soil and groundwater remediation work, uh, in addition to uh, contaminants associated with buildings like indoor air quality and mold and asbestos and lead paint and things like that. Some examples of the projects that I have worked on involve uh, maybe a piece of property that was once an industrial site that a new owner wants to purchase and they may want to knock down, demo everything that's there and build a new manufacturing facility or some other business. Well, before they buy that property, they want to make sure there's no environmental contamination that they would then purchase and have to inherit and clean up. So we'll do environmental assessments on those properties. There may be a former dry cleaner located off site that may have groundwater contamination flowing onto the site. Or on site, there may have been an automobile repair shop where they used oil and gasoline and solvents that could have potentially caused contamination. Or maybe even some kind of manufacturing process where they made metal products and dipped them and uh, galvanized them and had zinc and cadmium and chromium and other chemicals that they used. Uh, so we would identify potential sources of contamination and then we would sample. We'd sample the soil and groundwater, find out if there's a problem so these people will have knowledge of what they're purchasing. As an engineer, our deliverable is often written documents so we do field sampling, so a lot of days are spent in the field. And then those samples are analyzed by laboratories, and then when that information comes in, we write reports is basically the story of what we did. Um, generally, it is a moderately, I guess I would say, stress level job. Um, the hours can be long. There are busy months and there are slow months. Uh, like many businesses, it depends on how much work we have. Um, generally, I work at least 45 to 50 hours a week, and sometimes it could be more than that. Occasionally, we do out-of-town work when I'll have to travel for a few days to a, a location within a hundred, couple hundred miles or so of my home office and stay the night in hotels and uh, while I'm doing some of that sampling that we talked about. What seems obvious is you have to have an engineering degree. Uh, my degree is in geological engineering. It's very common for uh, civil engineers to specialize in environmental engineering. Civil engineering is uh, generally a, a broad uh, discipline. And within that discipline, uh, when you're doing your education, you usually take, can specialize or in, in certain different paths. And environmental engineering is one of those paths. Also, could be helpful to uh, get a master's degree. It's not required. You can get a master's degree in environmental engineering. You could get a master's degree in hydrogeology. Uh, maybe a master's degree in uh, advanced chemistry to, to assist with the environmental engineering career that you want to be in. Um, and it's also helpful during the education process to uh, get some experience, like maybe do some internships or have some summer jobs where you are actually working for an engineering firm. The resume can be enhanced with uh, other aspects with that master's degree and internships and those kind of things. Other important skills uh, associated with this is, uh, you know, obviously reading comprehension. There's a lot of regulations that we have to read and understand. There's a lot of procedures that we have to read and understand, a lot of laws that we have to read and understand, uh, and also uh, the ability to self-study. And what that means is, uh, as important as the education is, it, it gives you the background that you need in order to comprehend things but it by no means teaches you everything you need to know to do the job. All, it, it's a constantly learning. Uh, you don't learn everything you need to know in school. When you get out of school, there's more documents and more things you need to learn and, and be able to understand. Uh, other important skills are uh, ability to write. Technical writing is very, very important because as an environmental engineer, we don't do as much design work as some other engineers do. We do a lot of report writing. Um, 
Other skills involve attention to detail, uh, as that's what engineers are. We make sure the I's are, are dotted and T's are crossed, and, and we, we fill in all the details. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, a good work, work ethic. I mean, there's a lot of long hours and hot days in the field, and uh, there's just work to be done. So to me, uh, the best part of the job is the diversity in what I do. I, some days I'm out in the field, maybe two or three days in a row, maybe a half a day. Some weeks I'm in the office all week. Sometimes I may be working on a landfill project. Sometimes I'm working on a contaminated site. So there's always something interesting, something new. There's always things to learn. I'm not always stuck in the office behind a computer, but sometimes when it's hot outside, it's kind of nice to be behind the computer. And I'm not always out in the field. I'm not working out in the sun 365 days a year. So, and it's also a good way to make a living. Uh, generally, uh, as an environmental engineer, you are able to work for reputable firms that uh, can pay a very fair salary and 401k benefits and retirements and uh, health care and those kind of things. Well, to me, the thing I don't, don't like most about the job are, as, as I've mentioned before, sometimes, not all the time, there are long hours. Uh, and there is a, when, when you have a contract to deliver a report by noon on Friday, you have to deliver that report by noon on Friday. That may mean working till nine o'clock at night on Wednesday and Thursday to get that done. Or uh, working on a weekend. Uh, sometimes there is weekend work. Uh, it takes you away from your friends and your family. Uh, where you just have to get some field sampling done, or you have to get uh, have to get a report out the door. So, uh, at times there can be some stress and some long hours, and that's probably the biggest negative. It's not always a predictable eight to five, forty-hour-a-week job. Just stay focused. Uh, stay uh, understand what it's going to take, as in. What, what are the classes that you really need to have? Know what the, the university at the end is going to require you to have to get your engineering degree and stay focused on that path. I see a lot of people in, in the junior colleges taking a lot of classes they don't need and you're kind of wasting time and money. There's no rush to get through school, um, but you might as well just take the classes that you need and look for opportunities to learn about your career, whether you are volunteering in the summer to build oyster beds or beach cleanups, uh, and hang out. Hang out with people in the environmental uh, industry. Uh, get to know them, and maybe you'll find an internship.